This is the, the uh, conceptual core of evolutionary theory, the Darwinian theory, which is still there. Common descent and natural selection. On top of which you can add what happened during the synthesis. This is a partial view of it, but basically this, this amounted to the introduction of new ideas and new fields within biology. Okay? Paleontology was brought in. Population genetic and statistical genetics got started as a result of the modern synthesis. Uh, the, the, the new information about Mendelism and, and uh, mutation is going up. Right. Uh, so if I have to draw a similar diagram for what I think of as an extended synthesis, it would begin to look something like this. There is an introduction of additional fields, uh, evil, evil, evolution and genomics, uh, complexity theory, and so on and so forth, and new ID, new uh, empirical uh, new empirical kind of data, such as epigenetic inheritance, niche construction, and so on and so forth. This is obviously a partial view of what you're looking at, but, but that sort of should give you an idea of, of what I'm thinking. Notice that none of these other things have disappeared. So there's been no rejection of any anything that is part of the, of the Although there is a different in emphasis, such as different in emphasis on the role of natural selection. These are some of the questions that I think have received only partial or no answer uh, um, during, um, at, by the end of the synthesis, in between the end of the synthesis and today. So, you know, how do we factor in development? Development was famously left out of the modern synthesis. <coughs> of course, if you ask Hermes Meyer, he would tell you that that's because developmental biologists were either not interested or not sophisticated enough to understand evolution, that's his opinion. Uh, I doubt that that can be actually uh, backed up by the historical evidence. But that's one of the reasons, for instance, now we have, we've had for a few years the field, the entire field of evil evil. That's the that's direct answer to this kind of, of question, right? Um, is evolution really always gradual? Just remember pine tree equilibrium and, and the whole controversy that came out out of Gould and Eldridge work back in the 70s and that went on in the the 80s, and that surprisingly has had a completely different resolution if you ask paleontologists on the one hand, and if you ask neontologists, that is the rest of us, on the other hand. Um, is selection the only organizing principle? There's, there's, there are some ideas out there that in fact biological systems have a lot of self-organization that goes on that builds on, on, on the founded, on the um, structure, the physical chemical structure of, of cells and, and, and tissues, and that that Variation facilitates the role of natural selection. It's not opposed to it, but facilitates the role of natural selection in building complexity. Uh, what are the actual targets of selection? We'll go back to this thing uh, in, in a minute. This question in a minute. You know, does selection act on genes? Does it act on, on individuals? Does it act on, on something else? Um, is there a discontinuity between micro and macro evolution? The answer in the modern synthesis clearly is no. Uh, one is simply an extrapolation of the other. But uh, if you ask a lot of biologists today, they will tell you that they have not only uh, uh, conceptual reasons, but very compelling empirical reasons uh, to answer that no, that's not actually always the case. Is the question of inheritance settled? Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to bring back Lamarck. Uh, but on the other hand, there's, we've discovered uh, in the last few years quite a few, few interesting things about heredity that we had no idea until a few years ago, and that may have a fairly large impact on the way we think about population genetics in the future. Uh, where do evolutionary novelties come from? Uh, evolutionary, the very concept of evolutionary novelty is kind of somewhat uh, a, 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 a ill-defined one, but essentially we're talking about major structures and, and or, uh, that, it, that arise occasionally through evolution. Uh, you know, eyes and, and, and um, wings are a typical example, but, but there are some that are even more difficult to account for, like, like uh, turtles, carapace, for example. It just shows up in the fossil record out of nowhere. Since we don't think it was intelligent to design, there has to be some kind of other uh, answer to it. But it's not quite that, that easy to figure out. Oh, and what about ecology? Very few people seem to have noticed that ecology didn't make it into the modern synthesis either. It is true that there is a well-developed field of evolution in ecology. But if you ask my ecology colleagues, they'll tell you that that's evolution. It's not really ecology. Okay? It's population ecology, but the population ecology is essentially evolution. What we're talking about here is, what about community ecology? What about ecosystem ecology? Um, those disciplines have developed essentially in parallel and completely independently from evolutionary theory throughout the 20th century, which is a really strange situation if you think about it, because we're talking about the same kind of organism, the same kind of, of, of entities. And somehow the idea that we have these two fields that are often uh, similar enough that you actually have departments of ecology and evolutionary biology 
front of the country, and yet the two sides hardly talk to each other because each one takes the other one as sort of background condition, but does not actually explicitly bring it in into their own uh, theory. Uh, 